Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a conversation with Elizabeth Taylor in the afterlife. I've already talked with Elizabeth prior, so you can go ahead and check out the playlist with another video uh, where I have a conversation with her. So today we're going to ask her a few questions. I want to know about her jewelry collection, if she had a favorite piece. I also want to know about any advice that she would give us about life. I'd also like to talk to her about her work with AIDS because December 1st is World AIDS Day and I think it will be a wonderful opportunity to continue the good work and support the work that she has done as a philanthropist. All right, you guys, so let's get started. Miss Elizabeth Taylor. You, Elizabeth, you are so much more casual than I thought you would be. I have to be honest, you guys, she has like these silky red pajamas on and she says, you've got to be comfortable, she says. You can still be sophisticated and comfortable, in these silky red pajamas. <laughs> so we're sitting, and like it looks kind of like your living room very comfortable kind of um the furniture is kind of rounded a little bit um a little bit like silky satiny kind of if that makes sense to you guys and her hair is black and also a little bit of gray so it's kind of both all right thank you for for coming through today. I appreciate it. I know that um, there are many of your fans who watch here at Above Life Channel. So, so thank you for that. I have to ask you, so you came, well, maybe I should tell the viewers, you came in a session with a client, <laughs> like you showed up as a spirit guide for her. And that was cool and crazy. So I would love for you to talk about that a little bit. I'm sure people want to know, want to know, want to know. And I know the answer to this, but I know that they would like to hear from you instead of me. And tell us, tell the viewers, do famous people actually serve as spirit guides to just average, everyday, ordinary people? And if so, like, how does that selection process work? Because some of the viewers, I think, want to put in applications. Can you talk to us about that? She says, yes, yes, quite right. She says, yes, quite right. And she has a big fluffy white cat. And I'm thinking, have you been hanging out with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife? Because he had cats. And she says, oh, they're so dark. They're so, oh, Freddie is such a deer. She says, he, Freddie is such a deer. And she's holding up this cat. She says, no, she's beautiful, isn't she? She's so beautiful. And so then the cat kind of goes down and is like, you know, <laughs> like how cats are. Beautiful. All right. So do you... So I saw you in a session with the client, which is the first time I've ever seen you, I think, in a session with the client where I've actually said, oh my gosh, Elizabeth Taylor's here. <laughs> and it was in part because this, this woman has such a giving, generous heart and she, the work that she does in the world is very giving and caregiving and philanthropic and in such a heartfelt, clairsentient, sensitive, empathic way, just beautiful, beautiful. And so you came through as a person that utilized your power in your case you know fame and money and you know recognition and things to get behind things that you cared a lot about charitable organizations and things and one i know was was working with um aids and people with aids so that was so cool that you came forward for her so how do p other people that want to have spirit guides like you or Marilyn Monroe or oh my gosh who else you guys Freddie Mercury Prince David Bowie there's so many incredible afterlife guests that we've talked to here at Above Life Channel how, how do how does that work like do you guys just do we draw straws or what like how does that work she says oh it all happens behind the scenes you know all of the negotiations occur behind closed doors, she says. So, of course, I'm referring to your spirit, she says. Of course, you know how this works. It, There is a bit of magic. There is a bit of what you would maybe, your mind would perceive as secrecy. But it's it's simply 
a well-crafted and well-framed contract. It is, it is an agreement. And some people might say sole contract, and yes, that may be the case. However, contracts are always up for negotiation. Things can change, and that is really where the individual freedom of choice comes in. And certainly you've encountered that in your work. Yes, I have. <laughs> so sole contracts can change. So when you talk about sole contract, um, Ms. Elizabeth Taylor, are you talking about something that our spirits uh, conceived of prior to both of us incarnating? Or are you talking about something different than that? She says, that's the most common form. That's the most common that, that people think of. But there are so many different types of agreements. And there are many different kinds of terms. So there are some contracts that do expire and there are contracts that are renegotiated and there are things that are amended and changed. So throughout the course of your lifetime as a human, you have multitude, a multitude of choices and opportunities to change, to edit those contracts. It, it's not something that is, is predestined. It is something that is at any point, at any intersection point, at any point in someone's life, there is possibility for communication to open up, whether it be a time when someone, perhaps your viewers, are going through some trials, some major challenges. It could be anything from divorce, um, financial issues, bankruptcy. It could be um, the death of a loved one, the loss of a child, loss of, of any sort, a loss of health, health concern. There could be any myriad of, of situations that would create an opportunity for communication. And it's not, but it's not just in the moments of, of tragedy, but it appears as though the human heart opens up a gateway of willingness to participate in communication. And that's the key, really. Anyone can communicate with us or connect with us from the and from into the afterlife perspective because we're really not after. There's no after. It it really is as a spirit in existence with other spirit, you can always be in contact. And that does include your loved ones as well. It may not be in conventional ways. In fact, most communication and most experiences take place in the heart. And when someone is in a state where they are open, they are cracked wide open. And unfortunately that seems to come through tragedy or it seems to come at a very low point in life where you need help and you ask for it and you're actually willing to, to receive it. Those things, those factors create uh, an opportunity for communication. And that is when it, it seems to be most often, that seems to be when it occurs. Now that's not to say that we don't always, that's not to say that we don't keep time to be able to make attempts to communicate. There are most certainly many of us who have jobs, a sort of uh, work assignments to look out for certain of you. And that is perhaps because we have a, a life theme or a reoccurring sort of understanding of whatever it is that you're facing. And so there's some familiarity. And so we feel a sense of almost a sense of, well, I, I really should step in here. And it is at those times when perhaps it could be the most easiest to connect with us. So uh, does it matter? Like, do we, um, do we, do you guys just jump in and help us out? Or are we like asking for help and then you can respond? Or how does it work that way? It can, work, it can work both ways. 
usually there is, there has to be some kind of opening. So there has to be some kind of an, an ask or, or an invitation to, to participate in someone's life, to be invited into their heart. And that's most common where the communication occurs. That's where the entry point is. This is common understanding. She says this is common understanding. As far as to who works with whom, well, that's up to the individual spirit. And a soul-to-soul -soul matchup isn't just a singular relationship either. Many of us will have many of you that we look out for and watch over. And if you invite us in, that's all it, that's all it takes. And there's not this one-on-one -on -one, um, person to spirit, it's not the same as a human to human uh, connection. It's much, okay, I'm trying to get what she's saying. It's much easier than that for us. It's far easier for us to communicate with you than for you to believe that we are communicating with you. Thank you, thank you, Elizabeth, absolutely 100%. You are right on, right on. And I know that too, you guys. It's so much easier for them to communicate with us than for us to believe that they, we can actually connect with whomever it might be, right? Because this person is somebody that we think is like so ultra special and we just can't even imagine why they would pay attention to us. Well, it's a soul to soul co connection. It's not Elizabeth Taylor talking to Bridget. It's the spirit connecting with the spirit and then allowing for the opening, the opportunity for communication and dialogue. And that's what it's like, you guys. So, so do we get to, so we don't, okay. So if somebody is a fan of a particular musician or afterlife celebrity, can they just like ask that person to be part of their life? Well, absolutely, you can always ask, but whatever is for the person's Okay, so the term used is greatest good. She said whatever is for the person's highest good is what will come through. So it may not be that particular person that makes the connection. You see, there might be someone else who's been through that from a human level and is able to better communicate and be a better resource for healing. That's really what you're all about. You're asking for healing. That's what that's that's what is behind that's the motivation for every request for assistance it's healing there is a, there is a deep deep desire for healing and that may not be the words you would use in your human mind but that is a, those are the exact words that your spirit understands at a, at a true soul level and so at any given time you could be working with a multitude of us it is not archetypal it's not there are hierarchical there's no there's not a um you guys there's not like an ordering system she's showing me there's not like a an organizational chart and this celebrity is this and this celebrity is here and this is an a list a b list it's not there's not a labels like that you guys it's not like that wow this is fascinating i didn't expect to have this kind of a conversation with elizabeth taylor in the afterlife fabulous fabulous okay so i have other questions too i need to ask you about your jewels, your jewelry, your beautiful jewelry connection collection. Um, there was a comment on Above Life channel about that. Ask her about her jewels. So do you have a favorite? Did you, in human terms, like I know you're not like in the material possession connection <laughs> space now, but what, what was your favorite or a few of your favorites? Oh, she says anything with diamonds. She says diamonds and rubies, the the combination of the diamonds and rubies, and there's a big, heavy diamond ruby necklace, I can see that, and great big diamond ruby earrings to match. And then she shows me uh, like something that's higher up, like that one is kind of lower with a big drop in the middle, teardrop and some other like jewels around it. They're all rubies and diamonds. And then there's another one that she shows me that's up really high. Um, I can't quite tell if it's actually a choker. It looks really, it's really high on the neck and it's a, uh, like a green it's emeralds but it has like a gold with it or something i can't tell if it's like a a canary diamonds or with emeralds but i can see those two combinations i can't tell if i'm seeing like a layers like there's a couple of different necklaces i'm seeing but it's a necklace it's another necklace so it appears that necklaces are a thing for her is that accurate she says absolutely this is some this is one of the most beautiful parts of the feminine body she says 
this decollete is so beautiful with the collarbones it's very 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 sexy and she says it's it's very it's just gorgeous this this part of woman's body it's just beautiful absolutely just breathtaking and so um so she's showing me that all right so thank you that was cool all right so you guys if you're fans you'll have to write that in the comments if you know what her favorite pieces were that's what she's showing me to share with you okay so now let's talk about your work with aids because it is in December, it is World AIDS Day, December 1st, and you know that I have a connection to that because my father um, died of AIDS. And so I appreciate your work incredibly, appreciate it. So what inspired you to get involved with that, the work, with you know, championing, being an advocate for, for AIDS, AIDS research and funding and things? What, what motivated you? She says, I came, I, she says, I came of age in Hollywood at a time when there were many closeted gay men, many. And perhaps, you know, we've been married to some of them. Many of the actresses were just a front or a cover for, for men who were either bisexual or, or gay. And it was not accepted or allowed publicly. And the the movie companies would go to great lengths to hide the sexual orientation or preferences of their, especially their male actors. So as a cover or front, many actresses, especially young actresses, were, would marry these very well-known gay men to keep the image up, the sex symbol image. There are many. Okay, and I can, she's naming some people, and I don't know if this is like public knowledge, I think it is. Um, she's saying, she is mentioning Cary Grant, but I don't know that he's, if he's gay or bisexual. She said he's been with both men and women. So I don't know if he has one preference or another, but she says um, definitely Cary Grant. And then she also said, there's just a whole host, you guys. I don't think I'm outing anybody. Um, and then she says, and that created a whole, she says that created a whole network of, of, it's almost like deception. She's saying like, you never really knew who anyone really was because you never could be sure if they were supporting or promoting their image for their career or if they were really who they say they were. And she said, even a gay man can be with a straight woman, is what she said. And she said, I, I think it's just miserable to force people into force people into boxes. So they, it, it's more than just being who they are. It's, it's, it's about love. And you must, if, there, if there's nothing for you in life, there's love. There is always love. And that is something that should not have a price to it, should not have judgment to it. But I know most certainly it does. I mean, I mean, I, she's like, I was married many times. And it looks like she was married twice to the same man, I think, you guys. I don't know who that was, but um, and she's saying, so being in love with love is something I know quite a bit about. <laughs> she says, but it, it's not, it wasn't fair what some of my friends, my dearest friends were put through. And then to hide their, like she's saying, they were kind of forced into like hiding their sexuality. And because of that, it created the inability to take care of their bodies in a way that was healthy. So their longevity was affected. And then she says Clark Gable as well. And she says, this is not gonna be a surprise to many of your, many of your viewers. She says, it's not gonna be a surprise. And she says, but it's not something that, it's like the world vilified 
homosexuality and like she's making me feel like she had a really close relationship with somebody who was gay and she didn't want I almost what Rock Hudson comes to mind you guys we should channel him we haven't I haven't spoken with Rock Hudson were you friends were you very very much she said yes I feel like they dated I don't think they were married but I feel like they dated we were in the same circle she said he was an icon she said an icon she said it's so it's so sad it's just tragic I mean he did not have to suffer so much and she says AIDS is a horrible 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 disease and it's it's pre completely preventable and yet because there were all these social expectations it was something that was like a plague robbing people of their lives can you, I mean, can you imagine what it would be like to suffer so much? It's just not, it's not, it's inhumane to treat people that way. People should not be ashamed for who they are. They should not be made to feel guilt. But that's, that's the way Hollywood is, isn't it? Like, isn't there a lot of pressure on people in Hollywood in general? And she says, oh, absolutely, absolutely. It can make you, it can make you just, she's saying bonkers. It can make you bonkers. And she says, but it's, tra it's tragic. It doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. And she says, I had many friends that died of AIDS. I, okay, so you guys, there's a name that's a C name, like C A R, like Carl, or it could be Carrie. Maybe it's Carrie, Carol, Car Carrie, Car, Carl, somebody. Um, so Carrie Grant, Clark Gable, obviously Rock Hudson. She says many, many more. There are so many. So what about the women? We talk about gay men, but what about women? And she says there wasn't, the women, the portion of women didn't have as much of a stigma around it is what she's making me feel like. It was something that wasn't, um, like a woman never, it didn't seem as though a woman would consider being married to another woman at, the, at that time because it was a man and a woman. And that was the, just that was what was the the standard but when a woman could be promiscuous and could be flirty and could be um, you know kissing and and seen with other women it was not that it was not that big of a taboo it was it was something that was more accepted perhaps because it wasn't done in the context of just woman to woman it was more there was always there seemed like there was always a man involved and so because of that, it sort of made it okay. But back in those times, there wasn't the things that, the pressures that Hollywood has that people have now who are famous and, and with the media and things, it, everything took days to uncover and discover. And, and so by the time something came out, it was like not, it was like old news. It wasn't that big of a deal and it could be much more better managed and swept under the rug. So. I don't think it was that big of a deal for women. It didn't seem like that was any sort of construct. She says, but I can't speak to that my, she said, but I couldn't, I can't really speak to that myself because I much preferred men. She says, I much preferred men. Okay. All right. Hmm. Thank you so much. All right. Wow. What an in-depth conversation. We covered a lot of ground here with Elizabeth Taylor in the afterlife. What did you find most helpful or most interesting? Go ahead and write that in the comments below. Thank you so much for your time, my dear. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to meet you once again. And if you are interested more with Elizabeth Taylor from the afterlife, go ahead and check out the playlist at Above Life channel here. So I hope that this conversation has inspired your spirit and filled you with hope. Remember, the whole purpose of our channeling sessions is to remind you that this is your life. It's your life. So live it. Just live it. Thank you so much for watching.